Welcome, everybody. It's Video Interview Sunday, late in the year. And of course, we also, in these weeks, look back a little bit. And I am very happy to have one of my highlights of 2022 with me, a band that I had heard of before, but that I never really listened to before, I have to admit it. But their latest record blew me away. I'm very happy to have Sunflower here on the show. Thanks for being with us, guys. Thank you. Hey, thanks. <laughs> thanks for having us. So uh, first question that is always important because we got to support our scene. What kind of band shirts or merch are you wearing today? If at all. God awful truth. Ooh, shout out. <laughs> shout out. That's a good one. So uh, I see some yeah, other people with nice dead end threads. It's like a clothing brand from downstate. Yeah, but it looks very nice. Yes. I have a Closet Witch today. Shouts out Closet Witch. Um, and Wake Brewing. It was a collaboration. Beer and cool. dance. <laughs> and Dave, um, what, what have you got? Um, I actually have I, I have so many band shirts. I was looking through my drawer right before this, and I was like, I, I can't pick just one. So I went with uh, my buddy, Really Bad Cartoons. He makes shirts sometimes, but he does a lot of uh, like folk art. So that would be okay. a good choice. Yeah, and as I also, of course, have to drop what I'm wearing, I'm wearing a shirt by Sacred Bones Records, one of those labels which we should Hell all yeah. support. So, uh, they released sec- that Thou Emma Ruth Rundle uh, collab, right? Exactly. They released Emma Ruth Rundle. They have been releasing stuff by Zolo Jesus. So it's really one of those record labels which we should be paying attention to, I think. Um, so for everybody who is not familiar with you guys, so who is who and who does what in the band? I'm Ethan. I play drums. Mm-hmm. I'm Jim. I play bass. Mm-hmm. I'm Carter. I play guitar. And I'm Jeff. I yell. And you do that very well. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> so where are we catching you guys right now? At home? Because it doesn't look like on the road. Yeah, we're at home. We're at my place in Potsdam. Okay. And, and Jeff is... Also- at- yeah. I'm at my place three hours away from Potsdam. I don't live near them. I don't like my mic going away. (laughs) (laughs) But then the question is, where do you live? Because three hours away could be Canada in your case. I don't live in Canada, uh, unfortunately. Um, I live about three hours south of them. uh, Small town near, uh, in between Albany and Syracuse. So just okay. like dead center of uh, New York State. Oh, yeah. So as I always like to start with something funny, I have to ask that because one of the two alternatives must be the namesake of your band. Who are you more into, Post Malone or Harry Styles? Both have a track called Sunflower. Uh, it's definitely Harry Styles for me. I don't know, I don't know much about Post Malone at all. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, I'm a- yeah, I'm uh, a Post Malone guy. Personally, Post Malone guy. out of wow. the two, yeah, no clue. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm an Everclear guy. They also have a song called Sunflower. Oh, um, and that's classic true. band, you know. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> it's got to be Harry classic, Styles, though, Jeff. Come maybe on. not always classy, but definitely classic. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, let's let's skip the the questions about Everclear. Why did you call yourself Sunflower? <laughs> the apostrophe kind of irritates me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Who came uh, up with that? Yeah, th- yeah, that was me. Just uh, we were on an old the the first label that we were on. We used to have a different name. It was Collisions in Grand Red. Uh, we had recorded our first LP, 1963. We had uh, sent it off to some record labels. Uh, the one that ended up putting it out was like, I love this record. I think it's great. I hate your name. Would you consider changing it? And <laughs> we did. And it was just like, 
we came up with a bunch of different options. That was my suggestion, just driving home from work one day on my long commute. And uh, yeah, for whatever reason, that stuck. But how did you get to the to the apostrophe? Like, I mean, like, it definitely sticks out. But it was because you. It was because you pictured like somebody saying the word sunflower in the way of sunflower. Right. And the only way to really spell that is to take away the W, to yeah. take away that ow sound, and then the apostrophe. I was like, well, we don't need an apostrophe. We can just take out the W and just O-E. But Ethan thought really strongly about the apostrophe. Yeah, I wasn't really thinking about the fact that it'd make it impossible for people to find us on the internet. <laughs> Well, I, I think so actually it makes it easier, right? Because as long as you remember, oh, there is an apostrophe in that name, then everything is fine. Um, I'm sorry that you hate it, I, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I don't hate it. I'm, I was just irritated. I was like, okay. Either they're trying he wasn't to mad, he was somebody drunk. No, I'm also not so disappointed. I'm just irritated. <laughs> you know, being an English teacher, I was like, why would they do that? Okay. Um... <laughs> What is also, of course, even more important than any fun questions about Harry Styles ever clear or an apostrophe um, is, of course, the description of your sound. And I find it very, very interesting because there are lots, it sounds as if there are so many ingredients to that. You know, I, I definitely, of course, hear hardcore, punk, also some, I don't want to say classic rock because then we go back to Everclear, uh, but, you know, a lot of rock. <laughs> Are there other influences that I completely forgot? Uh, I mean, punk is pretty much like the main ingredient there. It's kind of a cosmic gumbo. You know, there's a lot of <laughs> from here and there. Um, but there was definitely a lot more kind of traditional rock influence from mm -hmm. my perspective on this record with a lot of the riffs. I also didn't yeah. write anything. <laughs> I, I think the I think the, the the rock influence is is apt as well. I mean, I have been trying to get us to cover Creedence Clearwater forever, um, and that hasn't happened. But uh, yeah, one of my all time favorite bands. And when I when I think about writing guitar riffs uh, and parts, um, like that's kind of where my head is at a lot of times. So then, which track by CCR would you like to cover? Oh, Traveling Band. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, Carter's yeah, I mean, also like suggested you... Sinister Purpose, which also kicks ass. Yes, yeah, definitely. But no, I, that was a you... traveling band makes sense, right? <laughs> what, what's like... the one that's in every like Vietnam era war movie? Fortunate, Fortunate Son. Fortunate Son? Fortunate. I, I, yeah. I would want to cover Fortunate Son. Hmm. If we were going to do a CCR track. Well, then the band would need a good singer, we... right? Oh, they would need a much better singer. <laughs> <laughs> but But let's get way because basically you already led me to a question that I always like to ask. You have already said that you would like to cover CCR and you have already covered Pink Floyd and Helmet, which by the way is always a good choice. But apart from those three, are there any other bands that you would like to cover? Soundgarden. Uh oh yeah. Um there uh I really want to do Green Eyed Lady by uh who did Green Eyed Lady? I don't know. We've always wanted to do um, Radar Love by Golden Earring. We have a long running list of cover songs we would love to do. Uh, Queens of the Stone Age Actually, was on there on there until Johnny Booth did Queens of the Stone Age, and we don't want to bite their, their style, so we will not cover Queens of the Stone Age now. I, seeing this question when uh, we got the questionnaire yesterday, it made me really think, and the presidents of the United States of America just that self-titled. I'd love to cover that front to back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like it's so goofy. I would always love any band covering Peaches. You know, like that's always nice. Even though I think that that is on the first one, right? Or is it on the second one? Yeah. Yep. Oh, all their hits are on that one album. <laughs> yeah. But two of they have. Uh, yeah, Lump and Peaches. They they had three, I think. Naked and Famous, I think, was was also a single. Yeah, we uh, we always uh, we always sound check with uh, uh, with Head of the Baptist by Cursed, and we talked to a friend about doing a collab on a um, uh, on on Friends in the Music Business, 
Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that really hasn't come to fruition yet, but I'd, I'd love to do that. Yeah. That is a good And last year, last year we were, oh, yeah, you go ahead. Uh, I, we can finally talk about this now. We were working on during the pandemic years, covering some songs that were good experiments, but didn't actually come to fruition. Um, Mm -hmm. and we were working on an Emma Ruth Rundle (laughs) tune, um, Real Big Sky. (laughs) We were working on Blue Orchid by uh, the White Stripes, and mm-hmm. uh, we were also taking a whack at Feel Good Inc. You know, just really trying to the Gorillas sure. track. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think Sinister Purpose was in there too. Yeah, oh, it yeah, was. Sinister yeah, Purpose yeah. was in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm just imagining, you know, Dave being on stage and like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> But now let's reverse it. Is there any band that you would choose to cover any of your tracks? Which band would do which track? Uh, Man for Man, Earth Band is doing the title track. Which one? Which band? Man for Man's Earth Band. They did uh, Blinded by the Light, which is a Bruce Springsteen <laughs> song. They covered that and they, they killed it. Yeah, but which one of your tracks the should, they, should they cover? Oh, no. All, all These Darlings and Now Me, the title track. They should do that. Ah, okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, no, that's a that's weird. Yeah, I want the Strokes to do um, a bombastic return to form for these Bay Area rockers, <laughs> which is oh, kind of wow, cynic, that's right? A good one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I hear a lot of cynicism. I like that. Um, was there in the way that led to the band? Was there for any of you some kind of like gateway record or band or maybe also event that got you into this kind of punk music that you're playing nowadays. Yeah. When uh, we started the band like 12 years ago, or like, like long time ago, like 12 years ago. 12 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a summer that Ethan and I moved into the place together and he was really, this introduced me a lot to albums that I think we still refer to like, uh, as the Roots Undo by Circle Takes the Square and The Always mm-hmm. Open Mouth by mm-hmm. uh, um, Fear Before Fear the Man. March of Flames. And those were just like two very dramatic cinematic albums that, mm-hmm. you know, no song sounds the same. And when we started the band, we had really no clue what we were trying to do. We were hitting a lot of things all at once, but we we definitely knew we wanted to, if anything, just not repeat ourselves and try to create something I would say theatrical like that and really dramatic like mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So for the other two, was there anything where you like say, oh, that, that was like for me a gateway? Um, I guess just like heavy music in general. I remember as mm-hmm. a kid hearing Hybrid Theory by Linkin Park for the first time. and was, just Wasn't he just talking about heavy that. music? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> wow. Sorry, I could, I... <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave, that definitely Danny... was like a turning point for me. Okay. And in getting into I mean, like, we have... music and, and wanting and, to I mean, hear like... like heavier and heavier stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I can, I think I can the... definitely imagine. I could definitely imagine Lincoln Park being a gateway band for many, many people because. Mm. What like 20, 22 years ago, they were heavy as fuck by definition. Yeah. Oh, the riff to buy really myself listened. is just insane. <laughs> yeah. I think the first uh I think the first like heavy song I ever heard that was kind of like in the vein of what we'd eventually get into was mm-hmm. uh 44 caliber love letter by Alexis on Fire. Mm-hmm. Uh which is I think that came out like 20 years ago, like the other day um and and then very shortly thereafter i heard um 43 burnt for the first time <laughs> which was like way too aggressive for me at the moment um but never kind of like left my head um uh, but yeah as soon as i heard that that alexis on fire song for the first time um i just started seeking out more and more and more i can imagine i mean like that were Definitely all of them were very, very important records back up the day. And it's interesting that a lot of the records that you dropped are also very short, or not very short, but very short. 
You know, a lot of them don't exceed like 35 or 40 minutes. And your record also doesn't do that um, by far. <laughs> I think I think yours is even shorter than Bad Religions Suffer, which means a lot. Um, 27 Club, baby. 27 <laughs> minutes. That's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but remember, you know, the members, like, it's it's a non-permanent membership in the 27th <laughs> one. Um, but would you say that usually shorter records are better? No. I no, so. I, I love long albums. <laughs> mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of not metal, um, mm -hmm. so it's generally, like, 45 minutes to an hour and 20 minutes long for an album, and just letting it coast i don't know i don't i don't think long or short is necessarily like an important factor in determining it i think it's just about what you do with that time um that's true i, I one of my favorite records uh is um is behold the fuck thunder by the great redneck hope and it's 12 minutes long and it's perfect and there's nothing <laughs> wasted and but then you know on the other hand like colors by between the barrier to me is like an hour and it's also yeah. pretty perfect and there's nothing wasted so yeah i think it's just about what you do with the time that you're putting into it mm -hmm. but like for us i don't we've definitely not set out to make short records but they're all under a half an hour right or right around yeah a half right an hour around. that's not been like a deliberate tactic it's just kind of what has happened mm -hmm. so the latest record, All We Stars, The Arlings and Me, uh, and Now Me, sorry to be precise. Um, how have the reactions been so far? I, I mean, like, our writer, Dan, is basically in love with the record. That's great to hear. But thank you so much. Yeah. I Lots of really positive feedback, especially from musicians we admire in the scene. You know, we're just a lot of texts from friends that were just, like, so happy for us and so proud of us. And that... That meant the world. Um, a lot of dickheads <laughs> <laughs> having very shallow takes on the record. And that's fine. You know, that's how you know you've achieved a certain level of notoriety is that the dickheads come out of the work yeah, would work, yeah. you know. <laughs> um I also just, think just ignore him, Carter. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I also think that what is very interesting about the new record it is and nothing against the records that you put out before really good records but the new record to me sounds like a giant leap for for sunflower um how did that leap happen is it one of those covid things you know okay we couldn't go out so we practiced and owned our skills i think i practiced with them like three times like actually like sat down no wait we actually sat down and like worked down the record that one time at the airbnb and then like a little bit here and there i'd be able to make it up but they they worked down the brunt of it um putting the riffs together <clears throat> but the, the airbnb yeah. was a huge part of it this time we uh we took the time to after we had demos for like all of the songs we went to a rental in the country kind of out near jeff and mm -hmm. spent four or five days like four full days just running the tunes and working on them and it was mm -hmm. such a dream for us all you know it was such a like goalpost. we could have done it before but we just never really had the material but this time we knew we really we had been playing with really great bands there's been a huge explosion of math core in the u.s and we knew we knew we really wanted to give this the love and attention that it, it needed because we felt like we had good riffs and those four or five days really helped like shape the songs and then allowed us to put finishing touches on them before going into the studio with Orion. So, you know, we've always set out to just make a better album every time we go, we record one and it doesn't matter how much we change, what changes, what music we're into. The, I think the mission has always just been get better and make better music. And it's, it's a, as simple as that. Just do better. <laughs> and you definitely yeah, achieved that... on that one definitely <laughs> thank you i think it's also really important to uh to highlight just how much jeff has added to the band yeah. and he's going to argue about it because he thinks that no hell is better which is the last record that he's not on but i think that adding 
a dedicated vocalist into our sound, into the way that we write things has elevated the level of tunes that we were able to create. I think that the record would still be pretty good with these songs if it was uh, me, Jim, and Carter splitting the vocals as we did before. But realistically, I think, and no offense to any of us, that we're all kind of like limited in what we can do vocally. And, you know, performing vocals was always just kind of like something that we felt like we had to do because mm. we had we had other members in the band. It's mostly been the three of us. And once our original vocalist left the band, it was like, well, I don't really know about bringing a fourth person, another new person into the fold. Like, why don't we just do it ourselves? It was mostly Carter doing vocals. And um, and I think that the vocal takes and performances were always like an afterthought, whereas mm -hmm. vocals are what Jeff does and is really great at and is has, has a versatile range, whereas each one of us has just kind of like one thing we can do vocally. <laughs> I, I, I think, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Jeff does it all and and better and more. So we, we should send that compliment to him, of course, then. So the, the other <laughs> question is, and I will now refer to a lot of your track titles because I think they're, they somewhat sound programmatic, you know? And when, of course, looking at a track title like Brand New Everything, the question is, of course, must be, is everything now new and better? Uh, <laughs> for us, yeah. For us, yes. Personally, for the band, I feel like that's a pretty good way to describe like the mm -hmm. the process that we went through in releasing the album. In the general, just like worldview of it, no, everything just gets it's getting worse, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm so pessimistic about the world. It sucks. <laughs> and you're... Tell us about it here in Central Europe with like a war a few kilometers away from us. Uh, that's yeah, oh, sure, that's yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that plays into a little bit about what Ethan said about, you know, Jeff. Um, what I, I, what struck me is also that there seems to be some kind of self underappreciation of what you do. You know, when looking at like ironic titles like All These Darlings and Now Me, um, is that your kind of like sarcasm or do you really, or did you really when writing the stuff, not see how much of a good thing you had been going on? Well, I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I think Ethan came up with a brunt, the brunt of the uh, track titles and also the album title. I think that's from a book. I could be wrong. Um, but the, the, the title, <laughs> yeah. the, the title is from, is from a book that Carter is very fond of and he suggested <laughs> <laughs> and I said, that's what we should do. So which book, of course, Listen, it's Carter, your brainchild. Just drop it. Which, Carter, yeah, so which... this is, it's an autobiograph autobiography of Red by Ann Carson. It's a book of poetry, uh, or a novel in verse, rather. Um, yeah. And yeah, some... no, when I, when I came across that title again, or that line, um, I... I felt it very sincerely, you know, we've never taken on like any of the like macabre or, you know, lyric styles that are found in like metal music. Ours have usually been kind of cryptic and ambiguous, but also personal. And mm -hmm. it was a really sincere sentiment that it was in the middle of the pandemic. I was teaching high school at the time and we went back to teaching in person and it was going okay for a while. And I felt like I was doing okay, whereas people around me were really suffering because of the pandemic and self-isolation. And then finally, I felt it hit me as well. <laughs> and I, I felt it very sincerely of, uh, whereas I was able to fight off the impending doom of like the worsening global climate, it mm -hmm. all settled in. And I felt it on a very personal level. And I felt uh, really connected to the sadness of myself and the people around me. Um, so it was a very sincere moment. But I hear what you're saying, that some of these seem tongue-in-cheek or sarcastic, and you're right about some of the titles, for sure. I mean, like, it, 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 uh, to me, they're very ambiguous. On the one hand, it could be sarcasm. On the other hand, it can be total under self-understatement. And that's also something that sure. I would like to ask. I mean, like, I have been talking to a lot of people in the last few weeks, and with a lot of my hardcore friends, you know, I've, we've been talking also about your band. And 
I remember one of them saying like, okay, they're my hope for hardcore right now. And I, I've read a lot of the reviews on your record. I've also read some of the dickhead comments, of course, stumble across them. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but how do you feel about such high levels of praise and appraisal? I mean, that, that praise is like, is very flattering, but I think there's something incredibly dangerous about mm -hmm. uh, digging too deep into it, thinking too much about it, putting too much stock into it. Uh, I don't, I certainly don't want that kind of pressure of, mm -hmm. of someone saying like, this is the band that is, is turning it around for hardcore. Cause I don't know. I don't think that's true. I'm glad that people really like the record, but mm -hmm. we've always just made music that, uh, entertained us mm -hmm. and, I, th I think that's the secret to making good music too, is that, that you make music that, that you want to listen to, that excites you, that makes your band feel proud. And if, if you're happy with it, if you're content, then, then it's a success. And if other people like it, that's, that's extra, that's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, but aside from it, it, that, again, that praise is, is awesome. And, and thank you for sharing that. With Very us. humble. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, it is. It is also kind of weird, you know. <laughs> it's not weird. <laughs> it's maybe for you. You don't know about your own music. Yeah, yeah, I can. No, no, no. I, I, know, like, I know what you for mean. so for so long. Like we've just kind of appealed to a very small circle of friends and and mm -hmm. like minded people. Which is not to say that we're not doing that now, but for it to get a little bit more attention after playing in this band for twelve years. Is a little surprising, you know. I think it also has to do with the, just like you mentioned before, the explosion of like a third wave of mathcore, right? You know, that, that yeah. happened a lot of bands recently who are back doing that kind of stuff. And also, just like I said, I, I want to like look at, you know, some of your stuff. As you already mentioned, it can be looked at as like tongue in cheek, you know, there, there are some things in there. Um, but how would you answer Zappa's question? Does humor belong in music? I mean, like looking at a title like A Bombastic Return to Form for Bay Area Rockers. That sounds like a little tongue in cheekish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but would you say it's, that does humor I, belong in music? Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, a healthy amount of it. <laughs> You know, also, I think <laughs> I'm going to say it. I'm going to say every time I die, you know, we loved, or I can say personally, I loved most about that band, Keith Buckley's uh, sarcastic style and ironic style of lyrics. And that, you know, they weren't the only band to be doing that during the time. And that's something I love so much about that early 2000s sassy, you know, map for era mm -hmm. is that it's very nihilistic. It's very, uh, absurd, you know, and I love the absurdity that comes out in the genre and the playfulness because it makes any of the frustration or the anger like really biting with the music and it makes it really effective. It just the two pair very well. It makes me, it reminds me of not to glorify alcohol use, but like being two beers deep and just ready to do something really weird, you know. <laughs> I think, um, it. It behooves everyone who's playing this kind of music to not take themselves too seriously. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and just enjoy enjoy that it it it's it's silly. Um, like I I wouldn't say that when I write lyrics I put much humor, if any, into them. They tend to be very self serious and brooding. Uh, but I know that when Carter and I are sitting down to like write guitar parts, every once in a while, like. Um, uh, what's the what's the break in the law ref? Oh yeah yeah, in uh, That's yeah, Judas yeah. Priest. Yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. seven but, trumpets yeah and seven <laughs> trumpets yeah, yeah, yeah I remember when we were writing that part together. I think your reaction was like, "That's too goofy. Like we can't do that." Yeah, it was too Judas Priest. It was, it was too break in the law. Yeah, it was yeah. too break in the law. But it was like, but it sounds fucking sick. Yeah. yeah. So let's just run with it and like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it makes us laugh. And if it makes us laugh, then it's worthwhile. Yeah, but it also feels great to play live. Yeah. Like it's such a fun moment that we can, I really feel everybody like kind of at 
paying attention together, you know, yeah. focusing together. <laughs> oh, is that like the driving riff? Yeah. The -na -na -na. No, no, just when yeah. it, it's just guitar and vocals. Oh, okay. Um, uh, three thirds, three fourths of you come from a place very close to Canada. I looked it up on the map, and it seems like you're closer to Toronto than to New York City. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but how no, was right. it growing? How was it growing up in Potsdam? And I use the German version of it, Potsdam. <laughs> um. So, so Carter's not originally from Potsdam. Carter moved up here for college. Yeah. Jim and I went to school, to high school in this area. Um, and then, uh, you know, we all kind of met in, in or around college. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I mean, we live in one of the poorest counties in New York State outside of New York City. Um, there used to be a really thriving uh um industry here as far as uh aluminum and metal and uh and uh there's there's a gm plant here also so i guess auto um and as we got older that all started going away those places were were reliable and and provided jobs for most of the families that we know in the north country and uh yeah so you know it became a more desolate area as all of that started to slip away. And now our uh, principal industries are uh, medicine and universities. So it's been a weird place to make art, I think, for quite a long time. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it can be a sad place, but I think that we've really, I think being where we are, separated from cities, and and cool shit to do you kind of have to like make your own fun yeah. and i think that's why we've leaned so hard into making music is that it's fun we enjoy it we can do it on our own we don't have to have outside stimuli to do it and yeah we can really take influence from the fact that there's some desolation in this area and, and it's fucking super cold for six months out of the year yeah so, I, was, I guess that's so, a long-winded answer, but no, that's that's totally fine. That's totally cool. Uh, but but I I take it that you don't have anything against big cities. I mean, like big city shotgun is probably not like against big cities, but against people, certain people, right? It was a phrase that popped up. I was watching some anime. I uh, it must have been like oh, he's the something. guy who always comes up with track titles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, definitely okay. nothing against cities for sure. Like, uh, uh, I feel like Albany, New York, is is oh. has been a very welcoming second home for us. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and it's it's a little bit of a trek, but that makes it all the more special to get there and mm -hmm. and be with our friends who are far away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've already I don't mentioned like big that. cities. <laughs> <laughs> That's the guy who I've been there. I don't in... like them. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, but but. Um... How gloomy must I imagine the winter in Potsdam? You've just mentioned it's like six. You said it's cold for six months of a year, but how how gloomy and dark is it? How must I imagine? Is it like Wes Craven who taught at Clarkson? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, this has been kind of a weird, weird season. Usually, it's much colder, much earlier in the fall. Mm -hmm. Um, but this weekend it was like, um, it was almost 80 degrees here yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, which <laughs> Fahrenheit. So I don't know, uh, <laughs> 80 degrees Celsius would be like 170 degrees, right? <laughs> That's, degrees That's like a lot. Is, it's like 26 degrees Celsius, like 25, 26 degrees okay. Celsius. Okay. But, um, the, the winter, I, I always have felt like. The winter has a huge impact on the mindset. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, the population up here regularly experiences seasonal affective disorder where people don't get enough vitamin D, so they're seriously mm -hmm. depressed, um, you know, which I know isn't unique just to Northern New York, but no. it definitely part of living in New England and the Northeast US, part, Northeast US, 
part of that is like adopting this personality of being miserable and making sure everybody knows about it. And, <laughs> and I think there's, there's a certain charm in that. I love it. I love the winter. I love, uh, I enjoy being outside more in the winter, I think, than in the summer because I don't know why it just, I really enjoy it. So, uh, but there does come a time where the winter wears on me and I get depressed too. And ready for sunlight again so and stop i had to just start taking my vitamin d supplement recently um there are a lot of bands that you are being compared to because as we said there are lots of different influences or at least lots of different things that one can hear in your sound and one thing that very often pops up is converge how do you feel when people compare you to those well kind of well doing hardcore bands i love it <laughs> converge is one of my favorite bands uh i think they're one of the best bands to ever do it um and it's yeah it's it's very flattering to be compared to converge it's, i mean it's like being compared to slayer it's like yeah every band it seems like that we play with now sounds a little bit like Converge, yeah. you know? <laughs> and I know that there's a population of metal people that hate that, but I don't know. Anytime I hear a band compare con to Converge, I'm like, oh, great. I'm going to love them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and and, and it's, it's more than just the music, too. I think that Converge, in a lot of ways, has paved the way for, for how to do DIY the right way yeah. and how to be a part of your community and a, pro and a productive and supportive part of your community um because they've been doing it so long and and so successfully that you can't you can't help but take some 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 clues from their blueprint yeah, yeah definitely um i have a few more questions before before we come to our infamous quick fires um one thing that i like about your band is that you are not afraid to come up with some kind of poppy vocal melody who comes up with those and how difficult is it to come up with them? Well, I'm sure you're referring to the, on this album, the biggest one comes at the end of the yeah. record. Definitely. And Jeff really, uh, Jeff's name is not Dave Thomas. He's not the founder of KFC. But he's, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that, what, <laughs> it, is that what it pops up as? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's Wendy's, by the way. Wendy's out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we see the guys uh, 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 surely know very right, fast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was wondering why you kept saying Dave, and I was like, because it's always I, I might be Dave down there. Well. I don't know. You know, be, being an old guy, and, you know, it's a long day. It's cold outside. You know, <laughs> I've used Zoom but, probably four but, times but, just to talk to these guys. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but yet yeah, Carter, Jeff, I'll just change that. So, so who comes up, Jeff, is it you that comes up with those, let's say, pop vocals? That, wait, was I the one that did that? I don't, I don't I'm, remember. I'm asking. It's been such yeah, yeah. a wild, like, year and a half. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I guess if I did come up with that, if everyone else is saying I did, um, it was pretty much just listening to it, being like, what would work here? It's not... Um, I don't really sing. I, I sing in the car. I'll be listening to music where there's already vocals on it that I'm not making up something myself. So this was kind of, that. this would have been kind of uh, my first foray into trying to sing in a register that I'm comfortable with, um, that I can sing in. And it's not overtly difficult. There's not like some crazy melody going on. It's probably three or four notes and it just kind of worked. Um, everyone liked what I was doing. And uh, there was no, oh, can you change it to be a little bit more, um, to have a little bit more notation in it. Uh, we added a harmony and that was, that was all we needed to, um, to put down before we listened back to it. And we're like, okay, this sounds great. This is, this is an amazing way to end the album. Which by the way, the harmony comes from our good friend who played in a, band from Albany, uh, Matt Sager, who happened to live in Burlington or near Burlington where we were recording. He's a fantastic vocalist. He just came in and just slammed out that harmony and it really just glued the whole part together. We were very fortunate to have him there. 
yeah, that, that last track, the title track, is definitely like an amazing thing to end it with. Definitely. And uh, I also thank you. I also like uh, the way that it it's like in a way a stop from what you did before, but at the same time, it's also nothing that totally takes you by surprise when listening to it. And that is, I think, one of the uh, biggest compliments I can I think I can make for a hardcore band because we all know that lots of hardcore bands have a tendency to repeat themselves. That's definitely something that one should not say about your record. Um, thank you, thank you. And and when we're talking about hardcore, I I think like 2022 has been a very interesting year for hardcore. Would you say, from your position as a band and as fans? Would you say that it was a good year for hardcore or? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think it was so good that I wrote down a list of bands that <laughs> <laughs> that came out this year um, or released something, a new album. Um, yeah. The ones that I wrote down are uh, Cal Marx, who I actually just found about last month. Uh, Gillian Carter, they just released a new album and it's crazy good. Yeah. Um, T Terror Cell, uh, the new Ken Mode chat pile botch is getting back together and playing a show um boris who isn't really hardcore but they kind of like seep into that punk hardcore um kind of vein and then uh sunflower released all these darlings and now me so like <laughs> obviously great year but even then like we were just talking about this before the interview like the the new cloud rat is insane um, like the new gospel is insane. The new Satu yeah. Grin is Sawtooth insane. Grin is fucking awesome. Like it's just been just killer release after killer release this year. You know, obviously the Cal Style Boys put out a very uh, notable album this year, and you know any other amount of like the Mothman record kicked Can't ass. The is fucking yeah. sick. Uh, the <laughs> split that God Awful Truth and Under the Pier did. Yeah, also excellent. Nerver. Yeah, the, yeah. The Nerver. Virgin Mother. Uh, <laughs> like, did that bummer album come out this year or was that last year? It was year? last year. But ah, oh, oh, yeah. sucks to and suck. It's, and it's interesting <laughs> that you still haven't even mentioned Burt's and Row and um yeah. City of Caterpillar. Uh, yes, I, yeah. only, I only listened to that Birds and Row album once and I remember it being pretty good. It is. It definitely yeah. is. Um C City of Caterpillar, I've not listened to that one yet. I'll have to check that out. Have to. Um yeah. but out interestingly we could probably go on for like hours with great new hardcore records this year. Uh, yeah. However, I would still say like some of the top five for me would be like Callous Dow Boys, some strange band from upstate New York called Sunflower, um, <laughs> Gospel, and probably City of Caterpillar. But that would mm. be mine, probably. Wow. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah. But you. amongst all those cool things, has there been any record where you say like, "Oh, I'm sorry, that's that didn't do it for me." I'm, I don't not to say it was bad record, not to say it was. I don't want to, but I don't want to call but, anybody out right now. No, no, no. no. Let's let's. <laughs> that's why I say not bad, not bad. Uh, but but we all know that there are records where one him oneself says, "Okay, that, that doesn't do it for me." Was there something for you mm -hmm. where you said like ah, I could have been a little for a little bit more to this side or a little bit more to that side? Yeah, and it doesn't have to be hard question. Yeah, I'm trying to really. I mean, we're, we're having a long talk about this before the interview started. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean the Taylor Swift. We all, I think we all agree was like pretty bland. You know, not bad. Yeah, but, but she, she she never used to play enough three chord songs. So. <laughs> I have to be careful what I'm saying because if my yes. wife ever watches this one, I will be like, <laughs> "You're in the doghouse for the night." Yeah. <laughs> we don't dog. even have one. <laughs> doghouse. I don't have a dog think, for another one. I don't think there were any albums that came out this year that I was, I guess, disappointed by that I expected more out of. Yeah. Um. Where I don't know. I didn't. Anyone that I had high hopes for was like, okay, they killed it. Like that new Chat Pile record, I was like, oh, there's got to be filler, and it's like, oh yeah, no, oh yeah, tracks like... a banger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are one of the reasons why I will time the the road burn pre order as soon as it's up. Chat Pile. Um, 
And I, I also have a background to that question. And we come like a little bit full circle again. Um, I think there are so many good records being put out in 2022 because bands have had so much time. Do you, do you like in your own circles see something like that where you say like, okay, those guys really leaped because they had more time on their hands? I've seen bands play live, uh, like I guess local level bands would be the way mm -hmm. to put it uh, since the show started up again, where it seems like, you know, they got together during the lockdown period and did write stuff, but they didn't really push themselves Um to try to write that not better riffs, but like to try to get outside of uh, the box. Um, it seems like so most of the time it's a lot of the same old, same old, but then you have those, those bands where they just hit you with this insane album that they worked really hard on. Um, and they do it so effortlessly. Um, but for the majority, I think it's just like they write the same old riffs and they're fine with it. And I'm happy for them for that. But um, I wish there was a little bit more, not effort, but just like, just trying to do something new. I wish there was a little bit more of that going on. Like, like new nuances in the sound? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Instead of just writing the same, like, kill switch and gay drifts, you know? Or terror for that matter. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> there's definitely something to be said for. Uh, for a band having the luxury of putting, you know, years and years and years into the writing process before they come out with a debut. Um, because, you, you know, like, nobody's ever heard of you before, and you come out with this killer record that changes the landscape of the music scene that you're playing in. And the reaction is like, oh my, how did they do this? It's like, it sounds so effortless, but it's <laughs> like they spent the last 10 years writing this fucking thing. And so then the pressure is on to put out a follow-up and they only spent a year doing that. And so everyone goes, eh, it's not their first record. It's okay. But of course that, that time factors into it. And I'm not so sure that it's, it's the time imposed on bands by the pandemic. Uh, I think the pandemic absolutely changed the way that bands wrote and conceived of their music. I know it did for us, but we've always taken a long time between records. We've always yes. taken a really long time to write music. Um, Too long. And, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll try to do better. Um, we're we're going to be quicker. We're going to be quicker. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's always for us just about taking the right amount of time um, and, and the care, it, put, putting that care into it and, and that scrutiny. But for us, deadlines have also been important. You know, mm -hmm. we've, uh, we've written music and got like halfway through the process and then said, okay, we need to book studio time. So we'll finish this fucking thing as opposed mm. to just, you know, making infinite changes. Um, so yeah, yeah, the, the lockdown absolutely changed the way that we approach things, but we were always going to take a long time to write a record. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And I think also, you know, especially in math chords, before you begin to, be redundant you should take your time right so thanks for all those questions first of all and now we come to the thing where i have seen bands disagree harshly on <laughs> <laughs> always my favorite part of every interview uh i'll give you a few questions with alternatives like what do you like more roses or tulips of course roses but um Every one of you chooses and gives a short explanation for your choice. And we'll start off with something easy. Corn dogs versus chili dogs. <laughs> uh, the, last right time, the last time I had a, a corn dog, um, I was extremely drunk and I threw them up the next morning. So chili dogs for the rest of my I'll never eat another corn dog as long as I live. Yeah, I have yeah. to go with corn dog. Uh, out of love and respect for our friends in Dreamwell, I'll have to say a chili dog. <laughs> <laughs> what I have here is a jumbo box of corn dogs. I live by the corn dog. I'll die by the corn dog. <laughs> Alexis on fire versus Billy Talent. Oh, Alexis on fire. Yeah, Alexis on fire. 
I think I can. I I think I've heard a single Billy Talent song, and I can't name a single Alexis on Fire song. So Billy Talent. (laughs) (laughs) Agoraphobic nosebleed versus pick destroyer. Wait, was the first one? Agoraphobic. Agoraphobic nosebleed. Pick destroyer. Pick destroyer for sure. Yeah. Why, Jim? Uh, Snapcase versus Every Time I Die. Every Time I Die. (laughs) Every Time I Die. Every Time I Die. Uh, Every Time I Die. (laughs) (laughs) Jeff, that looked like it hurt to say. (laughs) Well, for me, it would also, for me, it would always be Snapcase. But uh, Ah, being, I guess, being the oldest one amongst the five of us. Yeah. That's my, that's my excuse. Gotcha. Um, no, Ethan's 50. I'm not 50. <laughs> <laughs> He's 55. Yeah, that's right. Uh, no, I guess nobody beats my 44, right? So, my excuse. Oh, damn. I would not uh, have your 44. Hell yeah. Yeah, you would have said 64. Bismarck in Dakota or Frankfurt in Kentucky? Oh, uh, Bismarck. I I don't have an explanation why. I haven't been to either of these places. I haven't been to I've been well, I gotta ask them. if you I, come from Potsdam. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no response. I'm sorry, Jeff. I would say, I would say Bismarck. There's a little bit more to do. Um, uh, Frankfurt is bigger, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a there's a Frankfurt a town over from me. Yeah, so I don't I need another one. Like like That's thirty right. Frankfurts somewhere strewn across America. Yeah. Um, Dillinger escape plan versus Butch. Ooh. Um, That's a Dillinger. good question. Dillinger. Uh, just. Oh, that's yeah. I think. Just because Botch has had a lot of bands rip them off, so their music still wonderful stuff, highly influential. But to me, there's it's so hard to imitate Dillinger that yeah, I'm still delighted every time I go back and listen to any of their albums, just slightly more than Botch. That's I think it also I, tells also, a lot about the songwriting skills of Ben, right? When listening to Dillinger, it's like hard to imitate that. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes. I think that the 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 gulf between um, uh, calculating infinity uh, and and um, what disassociation, right? Is that mm-hmm. the last? It's the last the dissociation. It is is enormous, and I think that very few other bands would be capable of making that kind of leap. Yeah. Uh, Dillinger Escape Plan is good at everything that they try to do as a as as that collective. They're uh, Perfect. Yeah, and then when you then even take single songs into consideration, like Black Milk, which is not hardcore at all, right? You know, and still it sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or like uh, that piano only track, Chuck McChip, which is like a yeah. like a secret <laughs> track, is a is a gorgeous classical composition. And if yeah. you heard that, uh, if you heard that performed in a great hall, it would not be out of place at all. Because you come from a city with horror movie connections, <laughs> Scream versus Dracula. Are, are you talking We're about talking the, what are you talking Dracula Bram Stoker's talking about? Dracula with Gary Oldman? No, did, didn't Craven also do a Dracula version? I think he did. Oh, maybe. I, either way, Scream. Scream's the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's his name? Uh, Shaggy. Matthew Lillard. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Matthew Lillard. Yeah. Who apparently is an Every Time I Die fan also. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Matthew coming, Lillard, if you're watching. <laughs> coming to your surroundings, I have to ask, Blue Jays or Yankees? Oh. Uh, Yankees. I, yeah. You would fucking say that, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know it's it's not cool to like the Yankees, but I really hate Blue Jays, the actual bird. <laughs> Whoa. <know> <laughs> Whoa. So I'm going with the Yankees. Best yeah. explanation ever. 
Uh, but <laughs> G-Man versus Bills Mafia. Oh, Bills. Oh, Bills. What's up? Bills. This is a Bills household. We got a game today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. A few. Uh, I have like two two more music questions for you. Godspeed you, Black Emperor versus a Silver Mont Zion. Godspeed you, Black Emperor, hands down. I have all their albums. And you saw them in a cave. And I'm seeing them next week. And we're seeing them next week. <laughs> but still, you guys can also say something else if you want to. Ah, oh, jeez. No, no, there's no other band. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I prove a whole business. Let's just have Godspeed play everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Last one. one. Oh yeah. Last one. Because of your affinity for classic American rock bands, the Allman Brothers versus Leonard Skinner. Almonds. Woo! Yeah. 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 Big time. Skinner sucks. <laughs> Fuck you. I love Skinner. Out of those two, I'm thinking Skinner. <laughs> Bro, oh, Simple I Man see. Tuesday's gone. Are you kidding me? Those are great tracks. Oh, I Free see. Bird, even Freebird's good. It's overplayed, but it's super oh, good. I, I see. see. You know, on the next Sunflower record, we'll have a new vocalist. <laughs> Jeff, did you did your uh, did your cover up of your Freebird knuckle tattoos finally heal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, guys, thanks a lot for this interview. It was really a pleasure. I still hope that we will see Jeff uh, singing on and being performing on uh, European stages after this interview. If not, three hours' time in between can heal a lot of wounds. And for everybody, uh, listen, if you haven't done so, listen to All These Darlings and Now Me. Um, you will be hard-pressed to find a more impressive Mathcore album this year, at least in my opinion. Thank you very much for saying so. Thank you, Thorsten. Yeah, thank you. So have a good day, my friends. Likewise, Thorsten. Take care. You as well. Take care.